Okay, so I've got a handful of different implants, um, NFC, RFID, uh, temperature sensing, and I've got one of the magnets. So yeah, I know all about what they were talking about. I've experienced it. I can tell you what it's like firsthand. Today I'm going to focus on one particular type of chip because it's kind of new, it's kind of interesting, and it's practically useful. So basically this talk is how you clone an access card to an implant. We've all seen key fobs like this to access buildings. It's pretty simple to take this and clone it to an implant, and then you don't need the key fob. You can leave your keys at home, just swipe your hand to get into the building. Um, yeah, there's a couple of sites, my own site where I sell this stuff, and biohack.me is a forum where we all chat and design new implants and talk about stuff. There's going to be some medical sort of images with potentially blood, so just be warned. All right, cards. So everybody, I'm sure, uses these cards to access buildings. They're pretty common. Um, there's two different types of cards, or two general categories, high frequency and low frequency. We're going to be looking at low frequency cards because they're more common for building access and they're a lot easier to copy. There's several different formats in use. You have to, not all, form, not all formats are easily copyable, but the majority of them are. So HID cards, and Della cards, and EM4 cards are all very simple to clone with relatively cheap hardware. So there's a couple of options. You can use a Proxmark 3, that's the device in that picture. They are very expensive though, like $400 for a Proxmark 3. So for most people, it's not really an option. If you can borrow one, that's great, but you probably don't want to buy one because if you're just going to use it once or twice to clone your access card, it's a lot of money. The cards themselves, like the implants, are much cheaper than the reader, so it doesn't make sense to buy a reader. Recently, a new reader came out called an R Fiddler that can also be used to copy cards to implants. It's a lot cheaper, about $130, so still kind of expensive, but much better than the Prox. There's free software for both of these readers that allow copying cards. When you go to copy it to a new card, you have to have one of these AT5577 or compatible, because these are the cards that allow copying and emulating other cards. They let you basically rewrite it as many times as you want. So we already looked briefly at RFID implants. We're going to go into a bit more detail. Right now, available to the DIY community, there's three types of cards, or three types of implants, chips. There's NFC, so that's high frequency, that you can read and write with your phone. So I've got one of these in my hand, and it's kind of useful, but I don't know, I don't use it every day. RFID cards, like the low frequency ones, or what we'll look at. I do use that every day to access my house, so that's really quite useful. And sensors. So the only sort of market on the market sensor is a temperature sensor. So I've got that in my forearm. It transmits the uh, subdermal temperature to the reader, so it's less affected by the environment. If, if you're in a cold room and you take your temperature, it's going to be affected by the environment. When it's inside your body, it's less so. Obviously there's, like, I'm not a doctor, and there's legal issues with, like, performing surgery and stuff. Generally, if you do it on yourself, you're fine, because you're your own guinea pig, you have free will to do what you want. If you do it on someone else, it's sort of a gray area. It depends on the local area, so check, like, your state or your country to see if it's legal. Some, it's fine if you do it for free, and it's not fine if you, you know, receive money for it. Some, you need a certificate to be a piercer. It really varies by area. So here we have a few images of one of my friends doing an implant. You want to pick uh, a good location. So as long as it's not near the bone. So these chips are coated in glass. It's very strong. It's borrowed silicate, the same stuff as Pyrex dishes are made out of. So it's very strong, but it can break. According to tests we've done, you're probably going to lose the hand if, you've done, if it's had enough damage done to it to break the glass, so it's not 
are really a concern, but you still want to be aware of this. To that end, you don't want to put it near a bone because that's a hard object that it might be crushed against. So you want it in soft tissue away from bones. And you want to also avoid things like joints and other sensitive areas of the body. But aside from that, you can put it just about anywhere. I know of people with them in their thighs, arms, back, lots of ha in their hands. It's generally anywhere you want. Um, when you go to inject it, it's kind of like getting your ears pierced or any other minor body modification. There's a small amount of risk involved of infection or rejection, but as long as you keep the area sterile while you're injecting it, and don't get it dirty in the next few hours while it sort of heals and seals over, it's generally fine. There's very few people who have problems with it. The capsule is made of biocompatible glass, so the body doesn't normally reject it. It also doesn't bond to it, so if you need to remove it later, you can easily remove it. It's not bonded to the tissue. Healing is pretty quick for these devices. It's just a large injection. Um, within a few hours, it will have scabbed over, Within a few days, the scab will go, the bruising will go, and within about a week, you start to not notice it. The pain is only there for a few hours, and it's pretty minor, so I don't have a problem with this. As far as long-term safety and security, once, after about a week or so, the body encapsulates it with a little bit of scar tissue, and so it doesn't move within the body. So it's long-term, it's stable, it stays in the same location, as far as security, so this is DEF CON. There's obviously going to be hackers out there, myself included. Could they mess with these chips? And the answer is possibly yes, but because of the very small size of the chip, the antenna is also small, and the read range is very small. You have to get within you know, an inch or so of the chip to read it. So you're probably going to notice if someone is brushing up against you trying to steal your chip. And in that sort of situation, they could just as easily copy a card out of your wallet or pickpocket your keys. So it's at least as safe as normal security. So here we've got a implant video. So it's pretty simple as you'll see. So it really just takes a couple of seconds. It's just pinch up the skin, stick it in, eject the chip, and then put some dressing on the wound. Um, so here's what it actually is when you use it. So once you've copied it, this is a friend of mine who works in a hospital. I copied a chip, I copied his work badge to a chip he implanted. So that's what he normally does with his ID. And now he doesn't need to get it out. Also cool with automated doors, he doesn't even have to open the door himself. <laughs> um, and we've got another video, another friend of mine. This is me on the right hand side doing his implant on stage. And then after he went home, he can access his work office. Um, okay, so there's a couple of demos. I'm going to first show you cloning a key fob to a card. So I'm going to clone this to the chip in my arm. And then after the talk, because it's not a very good location here, we're going to go back to the booth, which is directly behind us, and we're going to implant someone with one of these chips. So feel free to head over there afterwards. So let's do the demo of cloning a card
Great. So I have one of the R fiddlers here. This is the cheaper device for about $130. They're available over in the vendor area, actually. Nothing to do with me, but I use them, they're useful. So we're going to try reading it. So we're going to read the chip in my arm and see what it's currently set as the ID on this chip. So that's the chip we're going to clone. That's the one with key fob. Currently, let's see if we can get it to read the one in my arm. Uh, yep. So as you can see there, the last two digits are 88. If we try the one we want it, this is the one that's 99. So we're going to try and copy that one to my arm. We need to tell it what type of chip we're going to copy to. In this case, it's one of the T55X7 chips. Now, let's see if we can hold this in place while I hit the keyboard, maybe. Failed. Uh, actually, we just need to copy this one, so, yep. So that's obviously failing because it's not near the implant, so we need to put it right on the implant. Uh, it's a bit difficult because I don't have an extra hand to hold the... Yeah, does someone want to come and give this hold onto the antenna for me? Hey, so can you just hold that? The chip is right there, so just sort of hold it like that. Mm. Well, that doesn't seem to be working. Should do. Nope, well, unfortunately this doesn't seem to be working, but it usually works. Sometimes it, take, <laughs> sometimes it takes a few tries to get it in the right place because the antenna is pretty small. So, assuming this works, it does because like you can see my friends opening the doors with it, so sometimes it can take a few tries, but you can get to work within a few minutes usually. But we don't have a lot of time here, so we're going to finish off this talk and then go back and do the demo of implanting. These are only low frequency chips that we can clone at the moment. The high frequency ones are not really an option, but there are larger chips, larger cards that allow cloning some high frequency cards, so it is a goal that we want to make implantable versions of those so that we can also clone like Mayfair Classics, which are a common type of high, fre high frequency card. Some cards just can't be cloned because there's actually decent security on them, so for example credit cards and stuff. We'd like to be able to remove the integrated circuit from these types of cards and encapsulate it in the same bioproof capsule made of glass as these chips so that then we can implant payment cards and that sort of thing. These chips only allow a single card at a time. They can be rewritten 100,000 times, but at any given time they can only emulate one card, which is sort of a pain if you have like home or work or somewhere else. So it would be nice if we could emulate multiple cards at once on the same implant so we don't have to have multiple implants, so that's another future goal. Um, is there any questions before we go and do the demo? Yep. Yes, I have done that to myself. Um, it's so sorry for those who didn't hear the question. She asked, "Was is it possible to remove a implant by yourself without having to get medical help?" And yes, I've done that. Um, it's actually less intensive than putting it in. Um, as I said, the type of glass is specially designed so that it doesn't bond with tissue, so it's encapsulated but not bonded. So you simply make a tiny cut at one end of the chip and sort of press the skin so it slides out. It's really pretty easy. Yep, anyone else? 
Yeah. Not me personally, but some of my friends are working on a project with that type of thing. They're trying to have a like a socket so you can plug a cable into that. Um, they've had some success. So the major problem is like infection. When you have a gap in the skin, bacteria gets in. But there are lots of examples in nature. For example, deer antlers and stuff where we have bone basically poking through the skin. And they're using special types of... Uh, I'm not a biology guy, so I don't really know. You'd have to ask them for the details, but special types of um, sh like bone-based chemicals and stuff which allow the skin to bond directly to the implant, and so that's to stop the bacteria. So it's something that's being worked on, but it's not really available right now. Yeah? For me, I've never had an infection or anything. I've taken a lot of care to make sure it's all sterile and clean. On, so with, as I said, Biohack.me is a forum where there's like hundreds of people who talk about this stuff. There are a few, but it's usually people who do something stupid, like not clean it or cause some injury while it's healing and that type of thing. So as long as you take care, it's very safe. Yeah, anyone else? Yep. It's definitely like the door at my home. So I'm carrying groceries and stuff, and I don't have to get my wallet out of my pocket to open up the door. I just put my arm to the door and it opens. It's really quite convenient. I use that every day. Yeah? It really varies. Oh, sorry. His question was, what are people's reaction when they find out I have these implants? And it really varies over the whole spectrum. Some people are just like, totally freaked out and think I'm crazy and this is disgusting and some people think that's so cool where can I get one so yeah it really varies um, most people are like well I suppose it's not really that different to a tattoo or a piercing so most people accept it Yeah, exactly. You can liken it to chipping animals and be like, oh, it's no different. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, we had the dog chip, so, yeah. Corporate shill. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, so we're probably about out of time. We should... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to head back to the booth, which is directly behind us. And we're going to implant a friend of mine. <laughs>